All right, so tonight I am doing the Kino Lober Studio Classics must-haves. But before I do that, <clears throat> I bought the new potato chips that came out, the Lay's ones, the uh, three, uh, three different flavors. So my kids have tried two of them, and they won't give me their reactions on it until I try them myself. So I said if I was going to do a reaction video, a reactions for the chips, I was going to do them live here uh, right now. So, I don't know which ones to start with first. So, I bought a small pack of these uh, taco flavored potato chips. And uh, as you guys know, what I usually do for, uh, for this, and I will be doing the Kino Lorber stuff and, uh, afterwards, I will be doing the uh, two chip thing where basically I'll, give, I'll take a chip, I'll eat it. Hey there, horror fan man. Have right, you got these potato chips yet? There's three flavors. Before I go into my Kino Lorber video, I'm going to uh, give these each a try and uh, see what they're like. I'm trying to not eat as many potato chips as I used to because I don't want to get tubby. But uh, let's try the taco ones. I'm kind of curious about these because I, I do like tacos. It does taste like taco. Uh, I'm not sure if it's, a, it's not really a pleasant taste. Uh, hey, P Mac. Uh, trying these. I'm going to be trying all three flavors tonight. Then I'm going to do a Kino Lober thing. I'm not sure if it's the blandness of this, but it has a flavor. But I can't really decide if it's a good flavor. It's not wowing me or winning me over. I feel like there's a, a bit of guacamole. <laughs> hey there, Savannah. Uh, I am doing chips from over, I'm not sure what you guys get over in Australia, but uh, I'm trying a three flavors here. I just tried the taco, which I was underwhelmed by. I'm curious to see uh, how the grilled cheese is. I'm <clears throat> I'm the guy that makes grilled cheese in my house. Did I go like uh I think I went Did I end up going out? Let me just try this. Tell me if I've frozen up, if you can still hear me, but I've frozen up. All right, so apparently I froze for a second there. Uh, I'm back. I hope you guys can still see me. I hope you guys are still here. Uh, you just placed a Kino Lover order. Ooh, interested in knowing. Uh, I'm actually talking to my kids as I, uh, as I do this. Uh, I'm not frozen now though, right? Just refresh the page if it still seems frozen. Uh, then, uh, because uh, it should be it should be okay. I went out and came back in again to do it. Excellent. So, I'm about to try the grilled cheese. Uh, and uh, let's see. I'm actually more nervous about the cheese than I am about the taco. It's hard to mess up a cheese chip, but I'm really not a big fan of this. It doesn't really taste like grilled cheese. I can see what they're trying. As I'm doing this, by the way, just so you see me going off to the side here, I'm actually letting my kids know. My thoughts on these chips.
So, pizza is the one I'm most interested to try. <laughs> okay, so I just said grilled cheese were very meh. Like, I really didn't like them very much. And uh, Mimi was like, okay, you can stay as our father. Uh, so let's try the pizza ones. Oh. Very rarely, well, can I say, I'm not going to do a second chip. But shag that, guys. I'm not doing a second chip. Oh, so the taco was bland, kind of had a guacamole type of taste to it. I know what they're going for. I don't think they really succeeded. It was the most, out of all three of them, the taco one tasted most like what it's supposed to taste like. It kind of did taste like like taco-ish. Uh, the grilled cheese just, it didn't taste like grilled cheese at all. It didn't even have, even have a cheesy flavor. It, it just did not taste good. And the uh, the pizza kind of just, just left a bad taste in my mouth, but at least it was the most flavorful one out of, uh, out of all of them. Uh, but, uh, Yeah, that's uh that that's my thoughts on those. So you guys, have any of you guys done anything with the uh, with the quinoa? I know that P Mac just said he did a. Uh, I watched P Mac's videos too. I uh, did he did an order for a quinoa lover. So I'm kind of interested to see what he's uh, what he's got uh, and what he's picking up. So what I'm doing, guys, tonight is I did a kind of a must-have blues where I talked about some stuff from around term movies. I can't, Savannah. I really wish I could. The thing is that if you look right here see that shelf well behind that shelf is around like 20 other shelves so at this point i uh i can't get in there so i can get on the outside of it uh the haunted tv series that's the one the guy from lost right if i remember correctly it didn't last long i have uh but i think it's the guy from lost the guy played jack and lost the star of lost uh he went on to do like some movies and that yeah i thought so uh I like a lot of the, the action-y stuff and some of their animation stuff. So what I'm going to do tonight is I'm going to show you some of my Kino Lober stuff, some stuff that I really liked. And uh, if you guys are looking at an order, you're thinking about buying an order, maybe some of these can be ones you consider. Uh, I think all of these are still available. If uh, some of them aren't, I apologize. I did go with uh, the Kino Lober Studio Classics. I didn't go into the, uh, into the other stuff. I didn't go into the Redemption or any of that type of stuff because I don't think any of that was included on the, on the sale this time. So... Uh, if I accidentally put something in there that's not Kino, I will, uh, I'll let you know. But uh, we'll start out with some Kino stuff, and we'll start out with some DVDs, because I started, you got Celtic Pride? Celtic Pride. So, uh, that's the, I can't remember that one, that's the baseball, basketball movie, baseball movie. It's a basketball movie with uh, Daniel Stern. Is it Daniel Stern in that one? I kind of think it's Daniel Stern. You can correct me if I'm wrong on that. Uh, it's been a long time since I've seen the movie. I, I want to get some more of the action stuff. Do you know if they're... The keep basketball, yeah, that's <laughs> baseball. Um, well, the keep will ever get a blue ray. It's uh, it's the keep is one that I don't. I'd be surprised when it comes, but I, I think it uh, eventually will come. Well, what a drop off! I had like thirteen and went down to nine like that. So apparently, the fact that I'm going into actually talk about the Kino stuff that I mentioned was uh, was a turn off for some people, I guess. Uh, <laughs> but. Uh, but yeah, so uh, the fir first one I'm gonna I'm gonna pick up and show you guys. Uh, I, I framed that in a way just to on purpose. This is 52 pickup, and uh, of course there's a Blu-ray of this one. I kind of wish that I got this one on Blu-ray, but I picked this one up during the HMV sale and I could only find the DVD of it, uh, and it was it was like a dollar. But if there is any film with Roy Schreider, the watch watch the Kino Riso under Capricorn. I don't have that one actually. Did you like it, Tommy Films? Uh, there's a lot of Kino I want, but this one here I love. I love this movie. I watched this one several times. Uh, Roy Schreider is fantastic in this film, and Margaret, uh, you know, it's gorgeous. Uh, but what really makes this film are the bad guys. The bad guys are amazing in this movie. Uh, there's no features on this one. Yeah, that's the guy from Jazz Savannah. Uh, he did a lot of these kind of like neo noir type films back in the day. Stuff like 52 Pickup, uh, Last Embrace. Uh, Mimi said the pizza's okay. Uh, so. I was I 
to the Naked Lunch. Has an Arrow released 52 pickup? Yes, Arrow has released 52 pickup. Uh, now, yeah, Vanity is also 52 pickup. There's actually a bunch of actually adult actors in 52 pickup. Not that it's an adult movie or anything like that, but no, they uh, had some actors. Only got it because Hitchcock's my favorite, and I have all these movies that are available on Blue. But this one was a DVD. It was a dud. Ah. Uh, and that's, honestly, I don't remember it. Uh, so, it's one that I don't own either, I don't think. But if you like Hitchcock, and like Hitchcock in style films, then Tummy Films, you need to have this movie. Arrow did put this out as well, by the way. This one has no features on it. It's a great transfer. Uh, but the Arrow edition does have features. If you want to, like, uh, basically an interview that talks about the fact that they did cast some adult actors within the film, and, and they're kind of like, pointing out where they were uh you know people like uh oh god if you've ever seen the movie things remember that horror movie i told you about do i collect movie posters i don't uh savannah i w i don't have enough room i started off going to collect some movie posters mostly indie stuff you may go with the arrow version 52 pickup if you're a fan of 52 pickup definitely uh get it either way but uh lira and welcome lira and it's good to see you back here uh, 52 pickup is one that you definitely should have in your collection, whether you go with Arrow or Kino. Uh, the, Kino the Arrow one has more, uh, got some posters from the 50s. That's actually pretty cool, Carlos. There's not a lot of posters around here. Now, when I used to go to the comic conventions, I used to find stuff there. I used to talk to a lot of the independent filmmakers and stuff like that. Um, so when I start going back to the conventions again, I'll probably be bringing back hauls and you'll see posters and stuff around that, that time. Uh, the guys that did this show, uh, uh, 50s have some great posters, Savannah. The artwork's amazing. That's a uh, 50s, 60s posters are incredible. Uh, next up is one that I think every action lover should get. And if you like, especially if you like really cheesy action films, and if you love the 80s, you want to get just like steeped in 80s stuff. Leroy probably knows this one. They're not here tonight, but Kyle and Nicole, uh, they would def to call it, so they would definitely know this film. We spoke about it before, actually. And it is Steel Justice with Martin Cove. And yes, that is the guy from uh, from the original Karate Kid film. Um, so if you've never seen Steel Justice, you owe it to yourself to see Steel Justice. This is about the most 80s film that I, action film I can ever make. You think Aunt Rambo is 80s or First Blood? No, no. Steel Justice is uh, completely 80s. There's a fantastic scene at the beginning of it where the bad guy tries to get the star, the Ramboish character, by sending him into a trap where there's a rat with a bomb attached to its uh, to its back. Just watch this movie. There's a music video sort of in the middle of this. Uh, there's some great fight sequences. And what a cast, man. Like, uh, we got, like, Martin Cove, Celia Ward, Ronnie Cox, Bernie Casey, Joseph Campanella. Um, and uh, in a, an odd bit of... That was, you know, that was Dolph Lundgren. It does kind of look a bit like Dolph. But no, that is Martin Cove, actually, the guy that played the sensei. And uh, in the original Karate Kid film, and did like a lot, bunch of other shows, especially in the '80s. And if you were a fan of like shows like Cagney and Lacey, he was one, one of the uh, the cops on on that show as well. Uh, what's really kind of baffling is there's this girl in the movie, and uh, she's like a, I guess like Asian American actress, and she's a uh, Asian Canadian, I think. <laughs> she's meant to be like I guess the younger character, and. She, I think she's supposed to be significantly younger, like maybe like 14 or something like that, but she doesn't look it. Um, it, it actually it looks really weird and wrong when the three of them are like a family together at, at the film. You think like a three-way is going to break out. Well, I see what the new Avengers got here. Really, I was sort out, oh, wow, it's not coming back in stock. Then you got a cool limited edition. But Steel Justice, guys, if you're going into the Kino sale and this was one you don't have, this is one you buy. Uh, I strongly recommend those first two. Uh, like, I give them, like, the highest recommendations possible. Now, this one here, I think, I'm pretty sure Shout just put this one out in the, as in the Shout select line, so you're, that's the lot one you're probably going to go with. Uh, so, and that, of course, is the what, what David Lynch's Wild at Heart. Again, not for everybody, but I think, for me, it's one of Nicolas Cage's best films. He, um, he really channers his inner Elvis Presley in this film more than any other movie. Uh, Cage is two things. He's a huge comic book fan. He's a huge Elvis Presley fan. And uh, in a weird way, he kind of gets both of those things in to this movie. This movie is pretty much a twisted, very different Wizard of Ozzy type of film. You just, it's just one that you got to experience. Uh, 
I love this movie. Tommy Films obviously agrees with me. And I'd say if you if you haven't seen it, and uh, the Kino one's probably out of print right now, so uh, grab yourself. Are you, is, is he really one of your favorite actors? I, I love Nicolas Cage. Uh, sometimes I lo he does great stuff. Other times it feels like he's kind of phoning it in. But he always, he always does his... I'm never not happy when I see a Nicolas Cage film. And I think that's because no matter if everybody else is uh, is doing, is is in the movie, if the movie's total crap, Nicolas Cage usually does like great stuff. Defoe was creepy as hell. Defoe was awesome. Uh, Willem Defoe, Nicolas Cage, again, a beautiful cast in this movie. Laura Dern, Crispin Glover's in this one, Diane Ladd, Isabella Rossellini, Harry Dean Stanton. So a great cast of, uh, you know, very Lynchian actors there. Uh, that act in a lot of Lynch stuff. Unfortunately, Nicholas Cage didn't act in a lot of Lynch stuff. I think that's one of the only Lynch films that he did, which is a shame because Lynch has such an odd, kind of weird, off kilter personality. You think that Nicholas Cage would be kind of like the go-to guy for Lynch? It would have made like Lynch and Nicholas Cage. The ugly dog eat dog with Defoe and Cage, directed by Paul. Sch I like everything I'm directed by Paul Schroeder. I, I can't really think of a movie that he did that I don't like. So the answer is yeah. Uh, it's been a while since I've seen it, but the answer is definitely yeah. So here's one I haven't opened, but I've but I've, but I've actually seen before this. But I've never seen the you hated Dog Eat Dog. So yeah, I don't I don't think there's any Paul Schroeder movie that I didn't that I just didn't like. Uh, I'd have to think, but uh, it was okay. Candy. Now this one, although it says 1999, as you can see, it still has the HMV logo on there. And that's the reason I haven't opened it yet. I have seen this movie f quite quite a few times, just not the HMV edition of it. You really like Dog Eat Dog? Tastes are subjective. See, I liked it. Carlos liked it. Savannah was did, you know, didn't really like it, even though it's one of her favorite actors. Watch it again. Yeah, you never know. A second watch sometimes can uh, can win you over. But look at the cat. Like some of these Kino movies, that's a great cast. Look at the guys that are in this film. You see uh, Ringo Starr right here. Uh, let's look. So we got like Ringo Starr, Marlon Brando, Richard Burton, James Coburn, Walter Matthau. Uh, a very strange movie. Uh, I, I enjoyed it. If you like that type of film, I, I definitely suggest uh, picking it up. I don't have it right here right now, but The Whole Croft Covenant with Michael Caine is also a decent, a decent pickup if you, if you haven't seen it. Uh, it's, uh, it's a film I enjoyed. I enjoy most Michael Caine films, so I do have a bit of a blind spot when it comes to Michael Caine. Uh, one that I strong, another one I strongly recommend, and I gotta say I I really do love this movie. Maybe Carl, favorite Nicolas Cage movie is, oh, is this movie right here? I love uh, the Jury. I saw this in theater. Uh, very like I'm a big like fan of like Mike Hammer. I'm a I'm a huge fan of like this uh, this style of film. I got this again. I knew it got like pretty pan back in the day. Uh, it didn't, it didn't get like a lot of love. I loved it back when I was a kid, and I didn't know if I was going to still like it when I saw it again. I thought maybe that now that I'm older, uh, it's turned into a cage thing. <clears throat> uh, but I uh, I loved it. I loved it more than I did when I was younger, when I saw it in theater. I saw this movie in theater uh, back in, when was this? 82. So I was I was 11 when I saw it. Think about this. If you've seen Eye of the Jury, I was like 11 years old when I went in to see this movie in theater. Needless to say, kind of, my theater was a little lax in letting me get in at 11 years old to see out of the jury. Um, and if you've seen this movie, you know that this movie is filled with like hyper, like violence and like nudity. I'll bring, thank you, our horror fan man. I this is a favorite of mine, and uh, I was worried when I saw it again. I'm doing TV series off. This is England. I, I don't think I have actually, uh, but I would like that's it does sound interesting. Watch this. <clears throat> and again, another great cast. Uh, we got like Armand DeSanti, of course, as uh, as, as Mike Hammer here. Uh, Barbara Carrera is in this one here. Lauren Land uh, Landon. So if you're a fan of like movies like uh, Maniac Cop, uh, you know, she's Lauren Landon's from that. Jeffrey Lewis, fantastic character actor. You'll know him as soon as you see him. You may not know him by, by name, but you will know him as soon as you see him. Paul Servino is in this one as well. There's a great killer in this movie. Some really suspenseful scenes. Um, Cool little mystery. Love the way that it played out. Uh, the jury, I strongly recommend it. If you don't have it in your collection, it should be in there. It's uh, not only it's not just a great action movie. It's a great kind of noir film. Great, kind of, almost kind of great kind of like gangster cop type of film. Just definitely one to own. A movie I'm interested in that you showed in your last video. I'm going to buy. Oh really? Which one's that? 
If you've ever seen the movie Invasion USA with Chuck Norris, uh, the fun, silly, cheesy, really fun action film. It was put out by, uh, by Shout Factory, actually. They did a, actually did a decent job of it. It had a, a sequel, but it didn't star. It has a girl on the cover. I kind of wonder what that one is. I, see, I'd have to go back and look through again because I got a, my videos, the ones are over there. Uh, is that the one, the Sex PlayStation one? Sent us to Cinna with three films? Uh, is this movie right here? Michael Dudikoff in Hey Movie Mac, you kind of helped inspire this video because I'm doing a Kino must haves. So I'm showing some stuff here, and I guess because you said you might order some Kino stuff, I'll just quickly go over the ones that I said that are must haves, and these four here. And once I the jury, I can do consider a must have. Uh, Candy is good, Curio. Uh, Wild at Heart, uh, the Shout Select one, I guess, grab that one. But uh, Steel Justice, if you don't have it, grab it. And uh, 52 Pickup, uh, those I do recommend, like, strongly. Now, uh, Avenging Force is a, uh, oh, thanks. I know. Kino is one of those companies, I gotta, I gotta say, Mac, that I just really love. And I always find that when I blind buy from Kino, I, in much of the way that I blind buy from Criterion, it was a force. It looks like a little girl. It was the very first movie I showed. Oh, I wonder what that was. Uh, I'm going to peek over there afterwards. I'm going to have to do this, and I'll, I'll find out for you with a weird name. Avenging Force, by the way. Check this out. i got to check something. I'm kind of weird. Well, I'm really curious what that is now. You mean Kathy's Curse? The uh, Canucks Plantation film, Kathy's Curse, is what I think you're th is the one you're talking about. And that one was put up by, uh, by Severn Films uh, here in uh, North America. Not sure who put it out in Australia, Savannah, uh, but I uh, definitely want to check out. But guys, it's filled with action. It's really good. Mike Dudikoff takes over the, the role that Chuck Norris played. <clears throat> Obviously, he's, he's younger in this one. The Day After. Oh, I kind of want The Day After, but I don't know if I really do. I want to have it in my collection. It's one that I saw when I was really young. They, sh they put us into the uh, into the gym, and they showed uh, over two days. They showed us the movie the day after. I grew up back in the '80s, back when the Cold War was still like a thing, wasn't actually a thing. Uh, Love Dude Cop. Wish we got more American Ninja with Mike and Steve James. Did you pick up the '88 films, American Ninjas, Leroy? Got Kathy's Curse in the mail yesterday. Tyler, let me know what you think of it. I think it's a fun con con exploitation film. And uh, I think Severn did a great job. I don't know if I saw the art cover. I have to go back to the video because I'm going to buy it. It's, uh, if this is the one, here, I'll show you. Hold on a sec. Pretty sure. That's Kathy's Curse. Yeah, actually, the day after inspired, helped inspire Perestroika. Uh, not the one? Strange. Uh, the first one I showed was Blackenstein. I don't think that's it. Uh, to pick up 88 films, American Ninja, worth it for the special features. I also got the Olive Films version as well. I don't have the Olive Films version. I got the 88 Films one. The first one had like a, uh, a feature-length documentary on the American Ninja films, and I thought it was great. Uh, if you don't have, you don't have this one... Uh, Leroy, I do recommend it. It's really good. And uh, it's a movie that seemed like it was setting up to be a series of movies. <laughs> Going back to my last video, let me know what it is. Uh, so I, uh, I do recommend it. Speaking of ones that I, that I recommend, uh, I do this as like a kind of a pack type of thing. The, def the Pink Panther Depot of Freeling edition. So here's a bunch of them right here. And... As you can see, I've got Love Venging Force. Yeah, it is a great, it is a great film. Don't you feel like it should have had a sequel? It's like lined up for like a sequel, or the like, a, like it could have almost been like a, a TV series ongoing type of thing. Uh, it's never too late, actually. That's uh, it does have a great premise, and especially in today's political climate, Avenging Force would actually um, be very good. So there's the uh, Pink Panther Volume One, and uh, of course Volume Two. Oh, these are great, by the way. These are great editions of Pink Panther with some fantastic audio commentaries on there. So 
great stuff. Also, there's uh, other stuff that from the Pink Panther, the Depot of Feeling line, and that is, of course, ones like the Blue Racer. Uh, I need more of my Depot of... You need three more? Oh, which ones do you need, Movie Mac? Uh, Sheriff Hood Clute, really cool one. Uh, Crazy Legs Cane, and of course, uh, the Dog Father, the ones I didn't bring over. Um, I, in effect, you, you usually got like a kind of an inside line. We're gonna get to uh, we're gonna get to that actually. We got we got a few to go through, so uh, we'll get to, to that. Uh, the Blue Racer Dog Father, Mr. Jaw. Mr. Jaw was one I, that I left over there, but I, I really do like Mr. Jaw. Uh, gotcha. It's uh, it's really fun. Next up is the uh, Chuck Norris one, Code of Silence. Uh, I really enjoyed this movie. I, for me, it's one of Chuck Norris's like uh, it's one of his better, more better, more serious films. I uh, because the bad guy Henry Silva, though he doesn't get to do a lot in it. He's the bad guy. He does a great job as a bad guy. Cannon screw themselves. See, in the late eighties, they tried to go full blockbuster. They should have continued with more dude cop action movies. I think so. Got the inside track. I uh, yeah, it does seem like you do actually. Um, we, have, or we like the same type of movies. Uh, Code of Silence is a great film. Uh, if you haven't seen it, see it. There's a few like Chuck Norris ones I don't have that I got to pick up. Now this is a box set. I don't know if this is on sale. I think some of the movies within this box set are out on their own, and they're on, they may be on sale with uh, through the Kino sale. But if the box set is on sale, definitely go for it. I do strongly recommend it. Uh, no features, but five great films with five great transfers. Because I actually got a positive review from Francisco Niebuhr. Welcome back, Savan. Did you forget what the movie was? Uh, yeah, I know. Like, uh, Code of Sons is actually a really cool film. I, uh, it's called Don't Torture. Don't Torture. Huh. I think that came out. There's like a... a uh, Oh, Don't Torture a Duckling. Oh, excellent movie. Uh, yes. If you have not seen Don't Torture a Duckling, I strongly recommend it. Uh, it's, uh, yeah, it's Fulci. Uh, and it's one of Fulci's best. After you get Don't Torture a Duckling, if you can get it, I recommend like you strongly go out and grab A Lizard in a Woman's Skin, which is also an another, amaz another amazing film and makes a great double feature with Don't Torture a Duckling. They are both really good Fulci films and uh, what I would consider high quality Fulci films. So the next one up here is Film Noir, The Dark Side of Cinema. Now, Kino has actually put out two Film Noir sets. One was a DVD set. I think that one's out of print right now. I have that one, actually. I, I, I summoned in that one at a record store. And uh, this is their uh, new one, the Film Noir, Dark Side of Cinema. So I'm going to just take them out, the movies out, and I'll show you guys. So it's just like a normal case. Uh, so you can buy these on, on their own if you're not sure like which ones you want. Uh, one that I do really recommend is uh, Witness to Murder with Barbara Stanwyck and George Sanders. This is a really good film. Uh, it's a very kind of Hitchcockian. I really love this movie. Uh, if you haven't seen it, definitely check it out. Uh, God, the one you've seen three of them. Did you like the Witness to Murder? This was actually... I'm a huge Barbara Stanwyck fan, so I may be a little biased, to be completely honest with you. Oh. Actually, do I have that one here? Uh, actually, I don't have Malone here. I got I own Malone, but I don't have it in this video. I left some out for if I'd wanted to do a sequel to this video, just to, uh, to let you know. But I might actually get some of the other ones. I'm actually really enjoying this. Uh, Bullet for Joey with, of course, Eddie Robinson and George Raft. I haven't got to Witness. Oh, Witness is a good one. You'll, I think you'll enjoy that, Carlos. Um, George Raft is a guy that uh, kept making bad choices uh, and like turned out movies that like uh, Humphrey Bogart and people would do. But uh, George Raft is a great, great actor. Of course, Edward G. Robinson. Um, I did enjoy this film. But it's one right now I think I remember, kind of least. A Big House USA. I know this one's being sold on its own. Uh, again, it's Broderick Crawford, who I really like. Like the atomic angle. into <laughs> Pull for Joey. Okay. I'm actually... Burt Reynolds was mad. I'm alone. Oh, I'm a huge Burt Reynolds fan. It's more, I think they came out the same year as Rear Window and kind of got shadowed. Yeah, and that, there's a re it is definitely very Rear, rear Window-ish. Uh, we move over the weekend. It looks interesting. 
So um, when you buy a Blu-ray movie and you already have the DVD, what do you do with the DVD when you have upgraded to Blu-ray? A lot of times I keep it uh, because it'll have different artwork, different features. Uh, other times, I'll, like if it's stuff that I really owned, uh, I've given it to my to uh, to my kids or some of my friends. I uh, when I upgraded my uh, Friday the Thirteenth originally to like the from the Ultimate Editions that came out with the really nice artwork to the box set with the with the little like Friday Thirteenth mat like Jason mask uh, hockey mask. I gave my original editions to uh, to my kids because I wanted them to uh, to have some good Friday the Thirteenth in their collection, and uh, I wanted them to have the Ultimate Editions because those are movies that we both really enjoyed watching. Um, the Big House USA, Roger Crawford. I'm a huge Roger Crawford fan, so uh, definitely I recommend that one. Next up is one that uh, that was just mentioned, and that is a Storm Fear. Uh, Dan Durier. I don't think you can go wrong with Dan Durier. Really, I really like Dan Durier, so uh, I knew I was going to like this one when I picked it up. And it's one of the ones that actually has kind of like a winterish setting. Next up, last but not least, is John Garfield and Shelley Winters and. He ran all the way. So this is a great set. Uh, if this this is on sale, I, I definitely recommend it. But Screen Factory released a box set of all the Friday 13th films like they did with Halloween. For some reason, I don't see that happening. I wish it would happen. Uh, but I, uh, I don't, for some reason, I don't see it happening anytime in the near future. I'd love to see them do it. But I think we have a better chance of getting Arrow to do it before we get Screen Factory to do it. And it's just a feeling I got. But uh, I'll, it's one of those feelings I, I want to be wrong about. Because Scream Factory put it at Halloween. I love to see them put it like a, uh, like, you know, Critters. That's nice. And I, I don't want the Critters box set. But I think everybody wants to see a definitive Friday the 13th set out there. And we haven't got it yet. We've gotten, like, lots of really cool editions. But I, we have yet to get a definitive edition. We've filmed our box set at at least one comment. At least commentary instead of just trailers. I know, Carlos, that was really disappointing that they didn't have anything for the film noirs when it came to, to commentaries. Because the uh, I'm, and I'm going to do like I I can't I was I planned to do it before the basement got got messed up. I planned to do like a big like a uh, video on film noir because I do have a, a collection of film noir and film noir box sets and gangster box sets that I wanted to talk about that have some great commentaries on them. Uh, so I will be doing that in the future once everything is straightened away downstairs. Uh, and then I'll talk about some of my favorite commentaries. I can tell you one of my, that one of my favorites right now, without even like having to think about it, is now is William Friedkin on Narrow Margin is a great, great commentary. Paramount I think owns the first day video, yeah. So I did what happened. Paramount really licensed, rarely licensed their titles. I think it meant rarely instead of uh, really. Uh, Cause yeah, uh, I would love to see it. Uh, you never know. If Paramount gets to keep the titles, yeah, we'll, we'll see how it goes. After because right now there's a there is a uh, 20th Century Fox films on you. Oh, nice. Uh, I've got some of those actually. There's a there's a, of course there's a battle going on right now. There's a fight going on for uh, for Friday the 13th between Victor Miller and the other and Sean Cunningham. So we'll see how that goes first, and maybe maybe this this here uh, lawsuit will actually bring stuff out. Yeah, Victor, well, Victor Miller really just wrote the first Friday the 13th film. Uh, that, and to be honest with you, the films weren't really based on what Victor Miller wrote. Uh, it, they were more based on what Ron Mars wrote in, uh, in part two and part three. Uh, Victor Miller just kind of laid a bit of a groundwork, but Ron Mars is really the guy that pretty much cemented uh, what we would know as the Friday the 13th franchise. That's my uh, humble opinion on it. Or not so humble, whichever one, however you want to put it. Do I own the Scream movies? Yes, I do. Savannah, one of my very first videos that I ever did, if you go on the way, way back machine and look into YouTube, uh, is uh, me actually showing you, showing the uh, the Scream box set with the, uh, with the with the mask. Which Paramount has so many old catalog titles that need a Blu-ray release. If Scream was able to get, oh, yeah. Paramount is one, is the company that really has been dragging their feet on a lot of this stuff. And it's, and it's, and it's a shame. Uh, maybe I should do a Paramount video on these days. So, in effect, mentioned it, so I've got to show it here. Now, I was going to leave this one for kind of last, but uh, you got put the big, but Rawhead Rex. I know Arrow put out an edition of this. Have I seen a movie called Rex? Yeah, I've seen all the Rex films. I like the first two best. Uh, third one I wasn't, so, I wasn't so big on. I don't remember the fourth. I don't know if I've seen the fourth. But uh, Screen Factory is putting it in a box set. I'm guessing that's why you're asking. Uh, and uh, I do, it's not, if you can get it like... It's a de it's a very decent and it's probably as far as found footage goes, uh, it's a uh, it's probably one of the best. Rawhead Rex out of print? I don't think so. No, I think this one actually this wasn't a limited edition. 
Uh, it's got a great slip cover, and I will say that not only this is for me, like I've seen the arrow one that looks, this is the one to get. Uh, and I'll, sh I'll kind of show you why. So there's a ton of features. See those, see these silver boxes are always a feature. So uh, I don't usually go through this, but we got an audio commentary by the director, moderated by Stephen Thrower, interview with actor Henrik von Bono, uh, in interview with actor Ronan Wilmot, interview with the special effects members and crew, interview with the cameraman, interview with the uh, Stephen R. Bissett, the co-creator of John Constantine. Constantine. <laughs> Got that better than the error release. Uh, I got a, in a, again, a book lay. Uh, there's a bunch of stuff here. And there's a, so anyway, let's look inside. So this is the slip cover. And this is actually kind of a cool little slip. Uh, but when you get inside, you get a completely different cover. It's one of the times when the slip cover and the outer slip and the cover are actually completely different. I uh, love the look of this. I, uh, I'm a huge fan of Rawhead Rex. Sorry, Clyde Barker, I think you're wrong this time. I think it was a really good film. It also comes with a uh, with a booklet as well, with some great writing. There's some Steve R. Bissett artwork there. Um, it's basically uh, getting some like drawings. You get like the kind of a mini poster right here, a bit of a write up. And not only that, you get a third artwork for this. So don't think you're just getting the the outer, like the slip cover and the interior artwork. If you're a fan of the old like VHS uh, cover for I Had Rex back in the day, this is it, and uh, it actually comes on the inside. With a, yeah, he did with a because the Rawhead Rex was extremely like a low budget film, and uh, although uh, it wasn't loved by uh, Clyde Barker to the point where he actually started directing because of it. So if you want, if you liked Hellraiser and what Clyde Barker did with it, you can thank Rawhead Rex for actually spent like uh, s s getting him give, getting him to do that. So he may never have done it if he wasn't dissatisfied with Rawhead Rex. I think that for me, Rawhead Rex is probably closest in to, not, maybe not exactly to like the story, but it's, it's very close to Clive Barker's sensibility. Uh, so I was really surprised to find out that he wasn't a fan of the film. Because there's some certainly, there were some, definitely some dark things and some going down and some twisty dark paths that Clive Barker's like writing really does. Uh, speaking of uh, like ones that like, well here's one that not a lot of people talk about and I don't think I'm seeing anybody like, um, uh, aside from me, like unbox this or talk about this one on, uh, on their uh, on their channel, and that is the OSS One One Seven collection. This is a really good uh, film collection. If you haven't checked it out, I do strongly recommend. It. It's got both black and white and color films. The OSS character is uh, played by uh, by I think three different people. We get two here with Curran Matthews. Pretty sure it's good Curran Matthews and two. Yeah. Then we have like uh, we have in the in the sequel. Do 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 Robert. Ho I know Robert Hosen was the bad guy in one of them. Uh, I know John Gavin is on a couple of these as well. So yeah, we got like John Gavin. Oh, John Gavin's on one of these. Things. Okay, Frederick Sta Stafford takes over from uh, from Kern Matthews and does the last uh, last two of these, I think. But they're like they're they're French films, but they're kind of like spy action films. They become more action oriented and more like James Bondian as they go along. But these are really fun films. If you haven't checked them out, I definitely recommend checking it out. It's a great set. Uh, again, sadly, no no real features on the set, but. Uh, Uh, well, Reality was in there like yesterday, Savannah. Uh, <clears throat> but I haven't seen Polly in a bit. Kind of surprised, actually. So, I wouldn't consider them, actually I wouldn't consider them James Bond ripoffs so much. Uh, they have a very different feel to them, Carlos, and like uh, like they get become more James Bondian along the way. But the uh, the first one came out, and uh, let's just see. Yeah, so first movie that's that's not on the set actually came out in like uh, in 1957, which was a a good like a few years before uh, for Doctor No came out. But the success of Doctor No is what spawned them to uh, to go in and like make these movies. Uh, of course, Kern Matthews. Ah, oh, thank you, son. Um, Kern Matthews does a does a great job. Uh, if you want to see what John Gavin would have been like as James Bond. Shock actually Warner Brothers license, license critter. I think we're going to see more of that. Uh, now, uh, I, don't, I want to see less of the Warner, Bro Warner Brothers archive horror and see more of it come towards like, uh, like Scream and stuff like that. Uh, next to it, uh, I do got to say I strongly recommend, especially the first one, and that is uh, an early Burt Reynolds film by the name of White Lightning. 
I, I'm a huge fan of this movie. Again, this is the one I saw when I was young. Uh, I picked it up. I wondered how it was, if it was going to be as good. It was better than I remembered it being. Uh, it was Burt Reynolds before he was really into the persona of the bandit type of thing where he would spend years kind of pigeonholed doing like a lot of roles and kind of being ignored when he did stuff like Malone and that because basically they weren't the bandit. But uh, this is a really, really good movie. So if you haven't seen this one, it, way better than, you, than, uh, than it even looks. And this is an awesome looking cover, by the way. Definitely worth checking out. It's got a, a, an interview. One of the collection edition of The Swarm, or at least a standard Blu-ray. I agree. But what's really cool, this is the first part of Burt Reynolds' Back to the Bayou. If you want both parts of this, of this special feature. Yeah, actually, uh, James mentioned it yesterday, Leroy. Uh, I'm actually really excited about my Max Mordor getting a, a Vestron bit release. Even though Max Mordor was, was not the best film, it had a great soundtrack, and it was kind of cheesy fun. And of course, you get to see uh, Bert Simpson in it. Uh, so it's it's really cool. It's uh, it's a different, fun little film. The sequel to uh, to White Lightning came out, and now Burt Reynolds does have the stash. And uh, but still, it's a really good film. If you haven't checked it out, definitely check it out. You get the the second part to the Burt Reynolds Back to the Bayou uh, featurette, which is really really good. So uh, if you haven't got them, definitely pick these up. Kings on Cocaine while directing. You, Oh man, King was on cocaine for a, a while during that, <laughs> that period of his life. Um, you know, he'd gotten successful, and I don't think he remembers anything about the, the, the directing of the film. And you can, if you really, if now knowing that he was on cocaine at the time, and then going back and watching the trailer that they put out for uh, for Maximum Overdrive, then yeah, you can look at him and say, yeah, it's pretty obvious that he was pretty coked up on it. Brighton and Boogie Nights, that was a kind of a comeback film for uh, Burt Reynolds, and a movie he deserved. Uh, a role in a movie he deserved. He deserved to get like a, kind of more of a serious, like a, a serious surf role and, be, and a comeback. Like he'd done like, he'd been like a relegated, and there's nothing wrong with it, but he did like some TV stuff afterwards, and wasn't doing a lot of films. You know, he had a successful series with uh, Evening Shade, uh, B.L. Stryker wasn't as successful, but I really liked it. But uh, the... Uh, it was good to see him come back to the to the big screen, and it's going to be the new new Tarantino movie. So uh, let's keep let's keep the uh, Burt Reynolds love going because this is what you want to see actors, and that that are really good actors. And I do think that a Burt Reynolds is actually a really really good actor who hasn't been given like the the credit and the service that he that he deserves. He is much better than the persona from the early '80s and late '70s let let on f for him to be, especially if you watched a lot of his stuff. Sharky's Machine is a great movie, Leroy. And I actually have that one here. I gotta watch that one sometime soon. I haven't seen it in years. I did buy it, but I haven't like. Uh, and I've been kind of waiting for the right night to watch it. And I love that movie. Now I gotta find it again. Thought I retired from movies. That's where. Uh, actually, if you get asked with Savannah by Tarantino to do a film, you, you might want to come back. Uh, so I guess this is, is on a fish is out of retirement type of things, which is actually great because I'm a huge Burt Reynolds fan. Uh, next up is a film that I think uh, deserves a lot more a lot more eyes to see it. And if you've seen this movie, kudos. If you haven't seen this movie, please check it out because this is a really fun movie. Much like Adventures of Buckaroo Banzai, is the passport required to enter Canada? I would say so. Because uh, we got to get a passport to go to the United States. So I think, yeah, you got to get a passport to get to, uh, to, get to Canada. Uh, but passports are worthwhile having. Trust me, I, I love to travel. And I do want to go to the U.S. sometime. Uh, I'm just waiting for things to calm down uh, over there so that uh, I can actually go there because I do think the United States is a fantastic place and has some amazing, amazing people that I, that I, that I love to go visit. Um, just right now it's a little bit, it's still a little tougher to, uh, but let's talk movies. Highway to Hell. Yes. Own this movie. Uh, so, uh, uh, Movie Mac, Leroy, Savannah, if you've never seen this movie, it's it's really, really good. And looking at this, welcome to Texas anytime. Thanks a lot, Carlos. Uh, <clears throat> I uh, actually did a lot of like work around like uh, with the companies that I've worked for with like Georgia and Texas and areas like that. Come to Australia and meet me instead. I would actually, I would actually sometime take you up in that Savannah because I have been wanting to go to Australia for ages. I have like a, a love of Australian cinema and uh, Australia in general. I grew up in the '80s. There was like a, a time in the '80s basically when Australia became like huge. Like uh, there was like uh, Crocodile Dundee. There was a show called The Highwayman. 
It's really good, uh, Leroy. And the thing is that it's it's not what you think. It's uh, it's really different. We got like some again. See this guy. This is uh, C J Graham. You know, if you that name's kind of ring the bell, and you're not quite sure where. It's from Friday the Thirteenth Part Six. Uh, Jason lives. That's the guy that played Jason. <laughs> I don't know, but the, I don't think your parents would like me saying uh, saying there. But if I came, I would stay at a at a B and B somewhere close by. Also, I I got to get my my swimming up because I hear they have great surfing down that way, don't they? Uh, and I do eventually want to learn to surf. How would hell? It's it's really different. It's weird. Think think of like movies like uh, Big Trouble Little China, China and uh, Ventures of Buckley Bonds. I just movies that defy classification. And How would hell is one of those. It's got a great soundtrack. Has a great cast here. Uh, ben Stiller's in this movie. His uh, sister's in the film, and both his parents are in this film. Gilbert Godfrey plays Hitler in this uh, in this movie. It's a really weird, quirky little film. They have kangaroos and stuff. I, uh, I don't like seeing kangaroos in a lot of Australian movies because they always end up like, if you, like in Wake and Fright, they end up like in a, in a hard, uh, well, yeah, the kangaroo hunt in Wake and Fright. Wake and Fright. Uh, Carlos, <laughs> road trip. Uh, but yeah, great makeup in this one here. Uh, just fantastically done. Uh, Culture Trini, oh, welcome, by the way. You do a job. That's the thing. I had the chance to move away from the position that I'm in to the job I'm in right now and, and go into a, and go into a different direction. Uh, something that I kind of wanted to do, but I, uh, but they offered me a bit a more of a challenge. So I, I, I took that instead. So we'll see how that goes. Um, uh, but yes, check out this film called Trini. Have you seen this one? Uh, I think you have, right? Uh, definitely, definitely watch this movie. It is a great, great, just, twisted it's funny it's it's cool patrick burgeon's in this film does a great job uh you'll guess the ending i'm pretty sure and and then it's a bit dark uh, richard farnsworth has a small but pivotal role in the film as well richard farnsworth is, a, is an actor of movie, in movies like the gray fox of course and anna green gables with megan follows uh i always like richard farnsworth and uh, the gray fox is a movie that used to come on cbc a lot i used to watch it it's a canadian broadcasting corporation the kind of like the go-to channel here in canada uh Next up is one that is so baffling, you got, you got to see it, and it, that is Beware the Blob. This is the sequel to The Blob. It's directed by Larry Hagman. Yep, that Larry Hagman, the guy that was in I Dream of Genie, and, of course, uh, played J.R. Ewing for uh, 14 seasons and then a, a series of movies and then two more seasons when the series came back in Dallas. Uh, but Beware the Blob is really, really cool. It's got, like, a really cool cast in it, and pretty much they didn't have much of a script when they wrote this film, so what they did is pretty much all the the actors, especially the bigger actors, they they kind of ad lib their lines, and it gives it an almost insane. Oh yeah, it, this gives it some gives it an insane feel, that's an almost unreal feel. The kitty to uh, to this film, uh, you you kind of know you when you go in and you're watching it. And, and the lines are coming out, and it seems like almost something Lynchian, some kind of weird Twin Peaks type of universe, uh, that some of the lines are just just off or weird or strange or, or just very real or raw. And that's because it is it is pretty much completely ad-libbed. The movie is almost completely ad-libbed. And like when you talk about the cast, we got Robert Walker starring this one here. Uh, we got Richard Webb. Uh, Larry Hagman does a small role in this one. Uh, but like we got... So, we got Dick Van Patten, Burgess Meredith, uh, Cindy Williams, uh, Garrett Graham. There's actually a, a role in this one as well. For the grumpy middle-aged man who just wanted the kids to leave him alone. You've seen this movie. That's obvious. But it's fun, though. It's, it's a fun film. i got to say, I do strongly recommend it. If you ever wondered what would happen if the guy that, that uh, if crew from Last House on the Left uh, decided to direct a slasher film. Well, I got that answer for you. And uh, Kino has it as well. And this was a Kino uh, one that they did with Scorpion releasing. Um, but uh, I'm pretty sure uh, it, it's, it'll definitely fit here. And that is to All a Good Night. It is a Christmas slasher film. It's different. I love Beware the Blob and Ready. Hey, welcome in, Ready. Uh, you, you love Beware the Blob? Yeah, Beware the Blob is a fantastic little film. Do you like this one? This is a weird film. Uh, Jennifer Runyon, who's uh, probably best known as being like one of those uh, the '80s girls. She 
a lot of people would have seen her in Ghostbusters. She's at the beginning of Ghostbusters where they're doing the psychological, where they're doing like kind of like the, the ESP test that, uh, that Venkman is doing. She's the one that is getting all the things wrong and he's telling her that she's got it right because he can hit, so he can hit on her. Uh, so that, that's her. Uh, she stars in this one. Now, uh, Jennifer Runyon also, of course, is probably known for, if you know like 80s, like comedies for the movie Up the Creek with uh, Tim Matheson, which really deserves, I'm not sure if it has a Blu-ray release or not, but if it doesn't, it really deserves it. Uh, this is a, not a very good film. Uh, I enjoy it for what it is, and uh, watch it, maybe, so I like to, like, every once in a while, I'll, I'll say, say double feature thing. So, this is, it's different. I wouldn't double feature with a Christmas, like, another Christmas horror. I would probably double feature this one with, how, with the original House on Sorority Row. Once you see it, you know exactly what I'm, uh, what I'm talking about. Interesting film, a bit of a curio, but uh, it's one that I do, uh, that I would put into the, uh, into the collection. Next up is a one that I know if Leroy's still here, he's uh, definitely going to give thumbs up to, and that is No Retreat, No Surrender. Early film, of course, Kurt McKinney is in this one. He's th she was also in Charles in Charge. Yeah, she was actually, Leroy. Um, you know, I, forget, I totally forgot that, and I had the first season of Charles in Charge here. Is Deep Star Six getting a keen release? I damn, I hope so. 4K because I will love that. I'm actually out of all the, like the underwater movies. I think Deep Star Six might be my favorite actually. So I've seen All Good Night. I remember seeing seeing it back in the video stores. It, it's it, it's a fun watch. Just know it's it's very cheesy, and you, it's not it, you're not going to get like a revelation like with the initiation with Daphne Zuniga. It's not going to be that type of thing. But it it is a fun watch. Yeah, love your know, no retreat. This is great. What's great is they got two editions of the film here. We got like a 94 minute international cut and the original cut of the film, which ran around 85 minutes. My favorite shark movie. The obvious answer for that is is Jaws, which is but Jaws is one is one of my favorite buddy movies. I wouldn't. My favorite shark movies is an hilariously bad movie, but called Shark Attack 3 Megalodon, uh, which I guess is kind of fitting with the Meg being out now. But Megalodon starred John Barrowman from, uh, well, from Torchwood and Doctor Who and a bunch of other shows. Oh, come on. Give, yes, you should give Curtains another chance. It has a bit of a wacky ending. It does start off slow, 4K. I'm not going to lie to you. It's a slow burn film. But here's the thing. When, Fort, when Curtains came out, uh, Deep Blue Sea is a fantastic film. Uh, it's just so fun. And with, with Samuel L. Jackson, that's an awesome scene. When Curtains came out, uh, the, when it was being made, the director producer, uh, Joss Ward, were like uh, clashing a lot. So one wanted to make kind of a slashery film, one wanted to make a Jello film, a kind of throw Jello film 4K. So just going knowing that it's kind of a, it's kind of a mixture of that. And uh, curtains is real. The scene on the on the ice is is creepy with that mask. I wish they would have used the mask a bit more, but I guess like less is more when it comes to something like that. But it does, I do and understand that the film does start out with, with a slower pace, but it does pick up and uh, it has a really cool ending. Curtains of Snaps, Carlos, they put out a great edition. Curtains put out, uh, oh, Snaps put out Curtains and they put a Prom Night at the same time. And if you only own like a, like a DVD of Prom Night, Snaps' version of Prom Night is actually a revelation to watch. It's that good. But guys, no retreat, no surrender. Pick it up. It's it's a lot of fun. It's like this is yes, this is an early Jean Claude Van Damme. Now don't go into this thinking you're going to see a bunch of Jean Claude Van Damme. He's a bad guy. That's literally seen at the beginning of the film and at the end of the film. Shark movie is called The Reef. Oh yeah, actually that's a decent film. None of them are usually have real sharks, uh, especially Jaws. Look at Jaws. The the shark in Jaws in Jaws was horrible. Was, they nicknamed him Bruce. He rarely worked, but Jaws is terrifying. And uh, especially if you've seen Jaws back in the day in, uh, in the theater, it was like, the, it, and the score was so good. It was, but yeah, Megalodon is the worst looking, one of the worst looking sharks you're ever going to see in any movie. It's computer generated, it looks horrible, the, uh, the, but it's just a really cool movie. The No Retreat, No Undercut has their own theme song. Yes, it does. So definitely check it out. Uh, if you're a fan of these type movies, you grew up the U.S. I grew up the U.S. cut too. Uh, I don't think I'd, I'd, ever, I'd ever seen the international cut, Leroy, until actually I saw that one there. Um, but it's different, and there's different scenes, and uh, you know, it explains the relationship a bit more in the international cut with the uh, with with the girlfriend. It makes more sense than this than he's, this girl just kind of suddenly shows up. Uh, 
Next up is a fun shade. If you like black exploitation, gotta say I really recommend this one. I, I was surprised. But oh, parts two and three by uh, with uh, oh God, what's his name again? Uh, yeah, I guess you own some shark movies. Not a lot actually. You'd be surprised, Savannah. I actually own Jaws one and I own Jaws three. I don't know if I, I don't know two. I don't think I really got to get Jaws two. I, I really did like them. I, people a lot, a lot of people hated Jaws two, but I liked it. Uh, Joseph Mascolo, who's passed away now. Uh, Lauren Avedon, thank you. Uh, I, I, he put out a lot of bunch. I like to see Keanu release the King of Kickboxing movies as well, Leroy, because uh, those are ones that I used to watch when I was younger. I'd love to see them do like a. Uh, how about the Being? Is that any good? Directed by Jackie Kong. She did Blood Diner. Uh, I don't remember the Being. I own Blood Diner, and I'll be honest with you. Uh, when I bought Blood Diner, it was my. I bought it because it was a very cheap Vestron, and I'm trying to collect the Vestron series. It was probably the out of all the Vestrons that have come out is the le one that I was least interested in at the time. And I'm a huge Herschel Gordon Lewis fan. Blood Diner, uh, you know, King Kickbox is damn really deserves a, a good release. Um, Blood Diner was was okay. It was funny and quirky, but uh, I wouldn't say the best. Record. Got the Jaws two, three, and four Blu-ray. Oh yeah, you bought, you bought your first Criterion movie on eBay. Is it what I think it is? Isn't Blood Diner the same director from Mortal Kombat from the nineties? I uh, I actually don't know. I don't think so. Uh, uh, but here, let me go to the the magic of uh, blood of uh, IMDb, and I'll find it for you. So her name is ja his Jackie Kong. Uh, oh, did Night Patrol? I really love the movie Night Patrol. Uh, so if you. It was directed by Paul W. S. Anderson. Yeah. But uh did she, she produce stuff? Uh but if you've ever seen if you want to see Jackie Kong's best film, like that Jackie Kong ever made, there's a movie called Night Patrol. And uh it's a uh, it's cheesy and it's fun. It's not like qual great quality, Linda Blair's in it. I I'm not sure it's a great movie, but it's a fun little film. Uh Truck Turner, Black Exploitation. Uh, definitely worth picking up. Ozzy Hayes, of course, he did like the theme song, The Shaft, got his own. And Truck Turner is actually a really cool one. He, he's very likable. Uh, the girlfriend in it's really cool. You know, he likes his cat. Uh, just, it's a really kick-ass movie. I did really enjoy this one. I was really surprised by it. I thought this was kind of going to be a throwaway. I'd seen a few like Black Exploitation ones that had gotten too serious and that, and that I weren't really, wasn't really into as much. But uh, this one really, really like... Uh, had a lot of fun with it. It was a it was a really fun movie. Now here, now I'm going to show you a, a bad film that I really enjoyed. You got to have black exploitation. So you got to have black exploitation in your in your collection, and you got to have some black exploitation from Kino because they put out a lot of a lot of like black exploitation and some really good stuff. I don't think I got it here right now, but there's one called Cotton Comes to Harlem that actually is a really good black exploitation film. And so if you don't have that, then definitely a Cotton Goes to Harlem actually really enjoyed that. Next up is super cheesy and uh, you guys can let me know if you've seen this one. Trouble Man. I got Trouble Man here. Uh, I haven't watched it yet. Uh, it's one that I keep that we were gonna watch about a weekend ago and we watched a couple other things and I, I've seen Trouble Man years ago. Fanny Alexandra. Oh! Goes for five hours. Yeah there's like a huge like it's a huge cut. Across 110th Street I got as well. Uh, isn't that Larry Cohen? Uh, which one? Uh, Oh, you mean the the one that I just uh, that I just met the black exploitation one? Yeah, I think so. Um, I gotta look back. I'll, I love Larry Cohen. I buy almost everything Larry Cohen. I bought Full Moon High. Your Sweet Fan Alexander's three discs. Yeah, there's a huge yeah the uh, because that one has there's two releases that one actually one that had like a. Looks like a writer. I'm trying to find something there. Hell Up in Harlem was a uh, Black Caesar. Hell Up in Harlem was produced by Larry Cohen. I know that one. Uh, with Fred Wimson. Oh! <clears throat> Sinbad of the Seven Seas. Dolomite's fantastic. I love Dolomite. 
Can just go for five hours. <laughs> yeah, trust me. Uh, Savannah, if you ever pick up anything like the human condition or, uh, or the Decalogue, you're going to see exactly how long some of these, uh, some of these can go. And, uh, but they're, you know, enjoyable to watch. Uh, that's the thing. And Fanny Alexander is a long film. This is a really bad movie. But it's really, really fun. It's a super fun. Uh, John, John Steiner, I think, is in this one. Yeah, the guy, remember the movie, uh, one of my favorite films of all time, my favorite Jerry Gentle films is Tenebrae. So Steiner was in Tenebrae. He played a, a small but important pivotal role in Tenebrae. You guys who've seen Tenebrae will know who it is right away and know exactly the role that he played. Uh, is the bad guy in this movie here. Most of them are bad. But they are fun bad, Leroy. Especially this one. This is There's some really bad special effects. Like Tenebrae is excellent. So PMAC, uh, Tenebrae, let's just say they go to John Steiner's house in Tenebrae and stuff happens. So you should know who John Steiner is from that. I really like your books. Uh, this is this is something else. It's uh, some, some unusual dubbing, really strange action sequences, really bad, uh, hypnotically bad, uh, like scenes that make no sense, and uh, special effects. And it is worth the watch because. You, there's such great, like, Sinbad movies out there. Those indicator sets. Grab that. That's a really good one. So that's good Sinbad. If you want to see bad Sinbad, if you want to sit down and have kind of an MST3K type of night, just really enjoying some really bad cinema, Sinbad and the, of the Seven Seas really, really fits that bill. Speaking of bad movies that I really enjoy, uh, ones that, and Astro Zombies. If anybody ever asked me my favorite Ted V. Michaels film, it's I would have to go with Astro Zombies. If you've never seen Astro Zombies, uh, you, you just order and a lot of them get mediocre to poor reviews. That's part of the reason I only got three. Now, see, that's the thing. You, it depends on the stuff you like, PMAC. So, so this here would probably get not the best review uh, for a film now, for as far as like as transfers go, Kino usually knocks out the park when it comes to transfers. That's usually something that they do really well. Uh, so you're pretty safe when it comes to that. So it's always fun to like when you're doing an order if you if you got the money, like uh, look at something that looks kind of interesting that you haven't seen before, and uh, give that a shot. Cause always good to like just grab something that you haven't seen, or that you haven't seen in a long time, or like uh, always do a blind buy. Whenever I can, if I got enough money, I'm picking up some stuff. I'll always grab one extra, uh, the inexpensive one, and I'll, that'll be a blind buy for me, just to be something that I that I haven't seen. Uh, the experience something different. I do that during the Criterion sale. I usually do that during the Arrow sale. I do that for always. If it over five hours on a disc, probably downgrading the pick and audio to make it fit. I th yeah, that's why I think that the movies maybe don't over a couple. What well, Blu-ray now? Would Blu-ray though? Because Blu-ray you can get a lot more on there without like compression issues. It's the tar party actually, I'm gonna upgrade. I'm gonna do some more within my uh, with my Kino stuff. But Astro Zombies, pick it up. It's got the Rift Tracks edition of it on there as well. Uh, really fun. As far as like Marty, I don't have Marty. I really need Marty. I got Marty about like a three pack that had Marty in the MGM release, but I really want to upgrade it. Life, but I don't have it all. Tell me, and I love that film. But we got like John Carradine on this one, Wendell Corey, Drunk in this one, uh, Tura Santana is in this one, of course. Uh, oh, you do a lot of the blind buys? Yeah, it's the thing. It's 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 hard, like uh, especially right now when things, especially for me, money is a bit tighter at the moment. Uh, I would love to. That the keynote, Every time a keynote sale comes up, it's, it tempts me, and it tempts my better half. Uh, every time. That's we always enjoy. Like we, when we started buying Criterion, we enjoy, Criterion was like the, our go-to sale, like twice a year, the, that we would both enjoy together. Like the Arrow sale, I would usually get stuff that I like there. You're thinking of getting Astro Zombies? It's really, it's really fun. If you haven't checked out Movie Mac, I strongly recommend it. Uh, you'll have a blast. Yeah, there's a sequence in this that you're going to try going through a movie this week. <laughs> um, I'm a fan of old actors because I wasn't raised with them. Uh, George Kennedy. Uh, yeah, I... Actually, I do have a few George Kennedy movies, including like the the Magnificent Seven film that he did. Uh, he did like a, 
a lot of westerns and stuff. And of course, it was in Dallas and is in like in, later on of, as well in a, in a really important role. But definitely, guys, check this one out, Astro Zombies. It's got the, you get, not don't only do you get this edition, but you get the Rift Tracks edition with, uh, with the best Rift Tracks guys. You know, Mike Nelson, Kevin Murphy, Bill Corbett. You're going to get an audio commentary with the actual director. Then you're going to get a third audio commentary with, uh, with historian Chris Alexander as well. Fistful of Dunham, I want to get from Kino. Great film. Yeah. Uh, any of the Westerns. Uh, there's a lot of, well, not any of the Westerns, but a lot of the Westerns. i got to get Sabata ones. I don't have any of Sabata films. And I love uh, Lee Van Cleef. I like old actors because no Twitter to it. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, James was. What were you thinking? Uh, George Kennedy. I lo I'll, yeah, i got to say, uh, always been a fan. This movie here, Young Gary. Now, this movie was remade, actually. Uh, but uh, this, is, this is the original. If you've never seen Young Gary, this is not a Japanese monster film. This one, I think, was done in Korea. I'm pretty sure this was a Korean kaiju. Yeah, it was their first entry into the kaiju films. It is unique, and I really enjoyed it. This is super. There's a scene. There's a Kenny type character. What's his name? I don't know the kid's name, but we'll call him a Kenny. You know, like those characters in like in the those kids in the Godzilla movies, where he dances and Yungari dances too. There's a sequence in this film where the uh, literally they, they they get the monster high. Uh, I'm not joking. That's that's a thing that happens in Yungari. So definitely worth checking out if you haven't seen Yungari. It's a really fun watch if you like kaiju films. Definitely. Definitely check it out. Next up is one that I've talked about on my channel a bit. And uh, if you don't have it, Fort Apache of the Bronx. Oh, God, that needs a release really badly. I saw Fort Apache of the Bronx in theater 4K, and I saw it once on VHS. It was the last time I saw it. I have, like, I think I've got the DVD, the old DVD edition of it. I found a while back. I'm pretty sure I do, but I would love, love an upgrade to Fort Apache of the Bronx. I love that film. Uh, so, uh... Yeah, that's when you ask movies that I, that I want, well, and I've been asked before which movies that I, want, that I think deserve like a Blu-ray edition, a new edition. Fort Apache is one of those. How many kinos do I have? Uh, a few, actually. I'm going to grab, I got a few here that I'm, that I'm showing you, but I'm going to, if you guys don't mind, after I show you these, I'm going to grab some more kinos because I want to talk a bit, a bit more about the kino stuff that's out there because it's a company that I really love. And if you guys got a little bit, a little bit extra time, I'm going to grab more of my kinos to show you some more stuff that uh, you guys can choose from. Uh, this is Sugar Hill. Uh, wh this is probably my favorite uh, black exploitation horror film. And, and I mean, like, even above, like, ones like Blackula, which is really, really good. I love Sh Sugar Hill. This, this definitely uh, is, is a favorite of mine. It's, it's a great one. It's one that they did with, uh, with Scorpion releasing again. I, print, I think it was Scorpion releasing. Or does it just look like that? No, I guess it's not Scorpion. But it does have the look that the Scorpion releases have. No, yeah, it is Scorpion release, sorry. Yeah, they, a lot of the Kino ones that they do with Scorpion have kind of a different style look to them. Uh, like you won't see like the Kia, the KL on there, but I think this one's available on the sale. I'm not sure. Yet. The Kino, because sometimes all the boutique labels feel overwhelming. Yeah, I, I got to agree. And the thing is, Kino seems to be more diversified than, uh, than a lot of the labels. And as much as I love Arrow, and I do love Arrow, and I do love Scream, I love Indicator. Indicator is very diversified too. I think Indicator is like kind of like the Kino slash Twilight Time of of the UK. So if you're looking to get like Kino style films, there like you're going to get a lot of that through the Indicator label if you're over in the UK. Is this one okay? This is not Kino. So this one is not Kino, but I love this movie. So I'm just going to throw it in there. Ten hours long, <laughs> yeah. Uh, Sorceress. I just love this movie. Just going to put that there. So that's, that's a Scorpion releasing movie. It actually got put in there. The premiere titles in Kino Server from 6 to 9, which makes quite cheap. That's the thing. They make them quite cheap. Not only that, PMAC, the, you buy a certain amount, you get free shipping. Uh, they, they ship fast and uh, they ship well. So Kino is one of those companies that really, really do some great stuff. Now, the next two, I'm pretty sure they did with, uh, with Scorpion. Uh, but they're, they're both kind of this there's a theme to these you could definitely double feature these uh, first up is a fantastic uh, AIP Mara Bava film Planet of the Vampires uh, and it is incredibly fun 
super cheesy, great. It's Bava, so it is gorgeous, gorgeous looking. Uh, the colors are, are incredible in this film. Uh, cool cast, and just, I think I'm talking about watching HBO in the, in the middle of the late 80s. Yeah, actually. Uh, definitely, guys, you haven't got this one. It's If you like Mirababa, if you've got any of the Arrow Mirababa releases, and you're thinking like Giallo and like Gothic and stuff like that. Yeah, they do ship well. Uh, Kino and Vinegar Syndrome probably, <laughs> just a leather fetish. Uh, if you, on my, my Instagram, I think I put on my Instagram, I did a picture of like them and the X-Men. Uh, from the from the you know, from the movies <laughs> and uh, the suits were very similar. See, think of Wolverine in the leather suit, <laughs> and uh, think of that. Uh, but yeah, Plan the Vampire is definitely one to check out. Oh, really nice having you here, Tommy Films. Uh, hopefully, I'll still be doing my 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 Stephen King one on Saturday. So hope to see you there for that, and. Uh, the double feature for f with Plan the Vampire, Plan the Vampire is a pretty simple one. It's Queen of Blood. Uh, great cast got uh, Dennis Hopper, John Saxon. Yeah, Mill Creek, but the early Mill Creek, but especially P Mac. Remember early Mill Creek before they got really good. Have a fantastic night, Tommy, and uh, definitely hope to check out the rest of the video. And I hope to see you here again because you are you do so your awesomeness. Queen of Blood. Check this one out, guys. It's really fun. Uh, Corman, it's a, it's a Corman film. Corman produced this one. Uh, Curtis Har Harrington was the, the director. We got like John Saxon in this one. Uh, it's, it, it's unique. It's different. I, I really enjoy it. There's the character note. And uh, like the Mill Creek TV blue, right, blue sets, except no subtitles. Yeah, that's, that, that, that's a shame because I do know, I have a few friends that are hearing impaired. Uh, and uh, they really count on the subtitles when it comes to a lot of, a lot of the movies they watch. Look for these long movies. Do you really want to look for the long movies? I want to get Kino Baba because I feel Arrow will get to them eventually. Uh, I understand that. And for all the rest of them, I, uh, I went with Arrow. But uh, honestly, see this? This is a really good double feature. It really, really is. You'd think these are like... These definitely are, they're not exactly the same or anything like that. That's for sure. They're very different like films. You want long movies? There's a lot of long movies out there. I'm I'm at the time where I prefer uh hey Jose, welcome. I like to watch tonight and keep low, volume low for my wife so I can watch sometimes with with no subtitles. So I can't watch sometimes with no, yeah, and that's you know which is really cool you by the way to, to do that. I tried to do that. I actually have a pair of uh, Bluetooth uh headphones that I uh, that I put in to uh to watch some stuff. Similar covers too, but very different films. They both have like a, kind of a vampire-ish type feel to them, but they're both very different films, uh, and it makes them uh, like similar enough in 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 like exterior ways, but uh, miniseries. You want a, well, you want a good one. Uh, the first mini kind of miniseries, or maybe even some maxi series, was uh, Rich Man Poor Man with uh, with Nick Nolte actually. Playing the role that if you ever watched Days of Life, that when they made the Patch character on Days of Life, they were really kind of like making the Nick Nolte character from Rich Man Poor Man. Uh, great one if you can actually uh, get a chance to see it. I, I did enjoy that back in the day, and I do have it. I just gotta get around to watching it again. So I'm gonna grab some more Kinos. If you don't, guys don't mind waiting for a second, I just, they're just out there. I'll be right back. I'm gonna have more Kinos to show you guys because uh, against my my better thoughts, I didn't bring in I don't think enough, but there's some more to uh, to look at. That's for sure. And we'll uh, we'll check them out in a second. But yeah, mini series is uh oh yeah roots, definitely roots. Uh, gotta go with that. Hey Rich, I'll be right back. We're talking Kino, and I'm actually extending this one a bit because I want to show you guys some uh, some more Kino goodness.
So PMAC, I'm actually a huge fan of Kino, and this video is definitely going to show it. If you haven't checked it, PMAC Savannah, definitely do so. One of the worst Van Cleef Westerns I've seen. I don't know if I've seen that. If I do, I don't remember at all. <clears throat> so. Here's some Kino stuff. First off is uh, what I thought was a really good film. It's a, it's a drama film, so it's different than, than what you usually see in, uh, in the stuff that I show. Uh, and that is Yuli's Gold with uh, Peter Fonda. I'm a huge Peter Fonda fan. It's a different film. It's, it's a more mature film for Peter Fonda, but uh, I did, you know, I found it interesting. Not my favorite. But uh, I did enjoy it. Now, this one here, I'm not sure if this is, I don't think this is a Studio Classics, but I'll put it in there anyway. It's a Kino one. And uh, that is White Zombie, one of my favorite early movies. I love Bella Go seeing this one here. If you've never seen White Zombie, I really recommend it. It's actually a really fun film. Uh, some people like, you know, there's two editions that came out of this. Uh, I think the Kino edition is, is, is the best one, in my opinion. Uh, it's got like some extra cool features on here, like a uh, it's got a digitally restored version as well as a raw and enhanced film transfer. Uh, just some kind of cool stuff. I really, I really enjoy that. Here's a different type of Kino one. Uh, it's an Eric Romer film. And I think it's the only Eric Romer film that Kino actually put out. And if you guys have seen the Romer set that came out from like Arrow and the one that's, that, uh, that Criterion put out, then uh, I don't think it was on either one of these. And uh, this, is, uh, this is Pauline at the Beach. So definitely worth checking. As you can see, it has a very different cover than like a lot of the other Kino ones. But again, this is again another one of the Kino classics. I uh, from line that I do. I got to say, I do like Romer, and I thought that was a fun film. And this was mentioned on here earlier, and that is Malone with Burt Reynolds. And I enjoy this film. I uh, you got the Romer Criterion DVD set. Is uh, Paulina at the beach on it? If not, you might be interested in that P, P Mac. But Malone is a, is a decent, like, Burt Reynolds film. I do think that there's, there's a bit of missed opportunities in Malone. I think this is a good film that, that could have been a great film. Uh, definitely worth checking out. Like, maybe Google it to see if you, you like kind of like the basic plot line of it. But I, uh, I thought it was fun. Like I said, they release directors less known works. Yeah, that is true. They do. Uh, and I think a lot of it comes down to the fact that they were able to get, like, some like the lesser known works that don't get snatched up right away. Uh, but, uh... Yeah, and they get a lot of the action films and the canon stuff, a lot of stuff that people don't know. Uh... Now, here's a weird one. <clears throat> this one here is, uh, was done, how do you put this one? Evan Hunter. <clears throat> In other words, well, Ed McBain. Ed McBain made a series of novels called 87 Precincts. Like, there was a whole series of them. There's even a TV series back in the day in like the 60s called called 87 precinct in the 70s he decided to make a big budget version of it with a whole star set of cast and uh he came out with this fuzz so as you can see there's great cast we've got burt reynolds joel brenner weston scarrett tom scarrett's in this one uh raquel welsh uh just amazing 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 cast now the movie itself is a bit of a hodgepodge i wasn't bored watching this movie i was definitely interested but it was different and i couldn't really tell i was frustrated with kind of like the the way it kind of went everywhere but Watch it yourself, I guess. Fuzz is one of those that the jury's still out on for me. I, I definitely enjoyed watching the film, but I, I don't think it was a really good film. The cast had kind of win me over, though. Uh, next up is a kind of a, a comedy western one that w that Reynolds did. Only an hour away from Canada. Right on. And that is Sam Whiskey. Of course, we got Clint Walker, Burt Reynolds, Ozzie Davis is in this one. Angie Dickinson, the ah, uh, Angie Dickinson. She goes on that uh, Google Doc list, by the way, guys. 
So yeah, definitely worth checking out. If you haven't seen it, it's a fun little film. Next up is a 3D film. Like Kino did put out a few 3D films in like an actual real 3D. Are we fun to go to Toronto soon? Toronto's fun. Uh, like right in Toronto, you're gonna go back to like a, uh, you're gonna go to like up to uh, the tower and all that stuff too. It's a really old movie. So okay, Sam Whiskey's not one of the really old ones. I showed you the really old ones before. Uh, you missed out when it was like uh, Ozzy Davis. I mean, John F. Kennedy. Why, well, yes, of course. It's Big Bad Mama on Blu-ray. I don't think so, Leroy. Uh, I have the Shout edition of Big Bad Mama when they put it in Roger Corman Classics collection with the Big Bad Mama 1 and Big Bad Mama 2. I will go wherever my wife directs. Me too. <laughs> I totally understand that, P-Mac. Uh, and you'll love it. Toronto's really fun. There's a lot of, a lot of really cool things in Toronto to check out. Trust me. You'll have a blast there. Uh, last place in Ontario that I was was Ottawa, and I, I really loved it. I used to live in Ottawa for a bit. I used to live in Toronto for a bit when I was younger, by the way. I lived in Toronto, I lived in Mississauga. Uh, I lived all over Canada, really. And we're, we're, we're married or... Well, I was married. Well, I guess, yeah. A lot of... Well, this younger... Well, there are younger people in there that are, that are, as far as I know, aren't married as well. Uh, ape. This is fun. Uh, don't go into this expecting King Kong. That's just thing I don't want to make. <laughs> See, Rich and Carlos are married. Eh? Uh, so many times. But we, your, your wife's never been there? Oh, no, definitely take her. Uh, yeah, she wants to go, man. Stay on the good side. Then you can watch movies like Ape, and she won't get mad at you too much. This has Joanna Kearns from uh, from Growing Pains. I kid you not. She actually stars in this. Uh, it's it's a film. It's decent. It's fun. It's cheesy. It's one of the one of the you know what you're getting when you watch it. Not my favorite Vincent Price film, but I did want to upgrade this one to Blu-ray, and that is uh, War Gods of the Deep. Fun little film with, of course, now the late Tab Hunter in this as well. Uh, Slower in parts, I find, but I, I do enjoy it. This one was mentioned by somebody, and this is one of my favorite like uh, comedic films. It's definitely one of my favorite Peter Sellers films. Uh, no, it wishes it was King Kong Savannah. It's a it's King Kong knockoff. It's really guy in a suit. There's a kind of an infamous scene in Ape where uh, the where he pretty much he he shows I you know he flips the the bird he, the middle finger he puts his middle finger to uh to like the kind of to the audience, to the, to the helicopters and stuff. It, it, it's, it's fun and cheesy. Just like uh, Google a, uh, a trailer for it. You know, it's hilarious. The Brandon Tennell, I think, did like a video on it, uh, which was really good. Next up is The Party, Peter Sellers. Fantastic film. If you haven't seen this one, I really strongly do recommend it. Uh, double feature this one with another Peter Sellers film that Kino put out. Uh, <clears throat> get the Vincent Price, even if it's about a double dip. Nice. Car See, Vincent Price is the man. Uh, there's one, do I have it here? I got it, but I don't have it here. What's New Pussycat? Like, double feature, The Party and What's New Pussycat. Two really, really good comedies. Uh, different, but uh, kind of fun. I, met, I showed some, uh, one of those Vincent Price ones. They changed the music, apparently. I wonder which one that is. Uh, that, I wonder, I'm not sure if it's War Gods of Deep, maybe House of Bamboo. Uh, I had to look into it, but uh, I know what you're talking about. Next up is River Death with Michael Dudikoff. This is actually, uh, it's an action film, again, again well, a canon type canon film, I'm pretty sure. I uh, know this is like a period piece, actually. So uh, there's like some fighting some Nazi stuff in this. So we got Michael Dudikoff in this one, and Robert Vaughn, Donald Pleasance, then this L.Q. Jones and Herbert Lom. So you got a great cast with, uh, with this film. And if you've never seen it, uh, I think it's fun. I really think it's a fun one. You don't think it was either one of those mentioned? Maybe it's one of the Dr. Goldfoot movies because the Dr. Goldfoot movies did have like a lot of like 60s uh, like uh, music and uh, in it. they were, uh, you know, they were kind of like the uh, kind of like Beach Party style movies. Dr. Goldfoot and the Bikini Machine, stuff like that. If there's a Vincent Price one that's uh, that the music's been changed in, uh, I'd have the, if I was the line, it's going to anything to Pleasance. Right on. I totally agree, Carlos. Uh, I would say, uh, and, and again, fuck Joe Chappelle, uh, <clears throat> that, uh, it's probably one of the Dr. Goldfoot movies. You might want to look into it, P-Max, see if I'm right or not. But, uh, 
I had to guess that, but that's probably one of them. That has music changed. God, like some creepers. Uh, he's great in everything, like like Halloween, uh, man, every, uh, the James Bond films, which we talked about last Saturday. Cotton Comes to Harlem, great film. I, I really enjoyed this movie. I was like kind of iffy going in. It's been a while since I'd seen it. I didn't remember it very well, but it was great. I mean, it was a really good film. Fantastic soundtrack, by the way. Uh, great cast. Uh, Red Fox has a small but important part in this film as well. I would have to close the live stream. I don't feel like it. Uh, it's, you can check on later. T tell me in the next live stream. I want you to come back, PMAC. You're invited anytime. Ever do, and if I ever do an open stream, you're definitely invited into that. Which I will do one down the road one of these days. Uh, Secret Invasion. Uh, basically, it's one of those. It's a Corman I'm pretty sure it's a Corman film as well. Yeah, this one actually is directed by Roger Corman. And I just really like these star movies. My uh, my better half really likes these, kind of like uh, those, uh, you know, let's all get together type things. Come back if I catch it at, at the night time. I try to do it at night, so. Great cast here. You know, we got Stuart Granger, uh, Mickey Rooney's in this one here as well, Henry Silva. It's been a while since I've seen this one, so uh, I have to go back. Speaking of Mickey Rooney, I have the other one. And is this Corman too? No, it's not Corman, I think. Uh, Ambush Bay. I remember seeing this one on TV years upon years ago, but uh, I now own it. You O'Brien. And uh, as you can see, it was from the HMV sale. So what did this cost me? A dollar. And <clears throat> still don't have it open yet. Next up is one that, again, is another one. The uh, I think it's pretty sure. It doesn't look to be Scorpion. I think it's probably one they did with MGM. That is At the Earth's Core. A great, really colorful cover. I think Mill Creek, Scully are long, long... Hey, D Dylan, welcome. We are going through some Kino stuff, and uh, I've actually gone through a lot here. It was, it was, time goes... Like, actually, yeah, as i got to say, this has really gone fast. I re I'm really enjoying tonight. Uh, hopefully you guys are as well. Um, At the Earth's Course, a fantastically fun little film. It's got Peter Cushing. Though, so there's some anime. I like that one. Uh, Peter Cushing's in this one. we got, uh, of course, Doug McClure's in here as well. Uh, it's by uh, Max Rosenberg and Milton Sabowski. So what we're looking at here is we're looking at Amicus. Uh, and you guys know I did the verses, so you know my thoughts on Amicus. Next up is a Charles Bronson film. As you guys know, I'm a huge, huge, huge Charles Bronson fan. And I really like this one here, Breakheart Pass. Uh, if you haven't seen it, definitely worth checking out. Uh, uh, we got Bronson, of course, Jill Ireland's in this, Richard Crenna's here, Charles Durning, just a great... I uh, don't talk too much. There's no such thing as talking too much in the movie club. That's uh that's part of the thing that keeps it that keeps it interesting, keeps it going. Uh, everybody talk, you know, talk not just to me, but talk to each other as much as possible. That's why this is a club, that's why it's fun. See? Carlos said it. I shaved down tonight. Nobody noticed that, but I just shaved down tonight. <clears throat> Next up is uh is uh, kinda of another fun little film and that is Certain Fury. It's got Tatum O'Neill and Irene Cara. Uh, I, I did enjoy this movie. It's, it's not as good as Black Mama, White Mama with uh, Pam Greer, but that one had Pam Greer. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I guess you could probably double feature our Certain Fury with uh, Black Mama, White Mama. Black Mama, White Mama, superior film. But, uh, come on, look at this cover, man. Doesn't this just, like, it's just like cheese, like, just like 80s cheese cover. It totally is. This one's mentioned as well. I got, yeah, these aren't all my kinos either, by the way, uh, PMAX, so I apologize if I'm, if I'm overloading um, this. I, I really did, like, in a couple of kino sales, I mean, Kara's gorgeous here, I agree. And remember Fame? That, needs a, that one needs a, a better release, so, like a real, like, a, like quality, like, release. You like one of her movies? Which movie? Savannah. Uh, Irene Kara's in this, if you haven't seen this one, she's the star of this one with the Taylor Uh she was a teenager. I'm willing to bet PMAC that Savannah shops at JB Hi-Fi. Uh, that's the HMV of Australia. Him say that about lots of kinos. I haven't got to watch most of them. That's the thing. Kino puts out so much stuff that sometimes, you know, it might be a while to get them. And it's, it's taken me a while. Little Darlings. Okay, that is actually a good movie. Um, it takes a while to get to, for me to get to some of these too. Like I bought The Queen of Blood and Planet of the Vampires a while back. And it was only about like maybe two 
two and a half, maybe three weeks ago that we actually sat down. Oh, two weeks ago, I think. We sat down and we watched them. We kind of we double featured them. We knew that we wanted to watch it. And we put like uh, one of the black exploitation ones in the middle, kind of a buffer. And we did like a three night, three movie night, like uh, a triple feature with Kino. Kino's really, really good. Uh, for their, uh, for their films for doing like double features and stuff with. So if you get one, like I think uh, 4K mentioned earlier, they'd have them was kind of you know, a Western he really didn't like. But the thing is, if you buy some Kinos and you got like, oh, this one's a little middling, you put on the next Kino and you're having a blast. So, oh, so, so. oh uh, like Disney a lot. I'm sub, but rarely watch. I think I am too. Uh, I don't remember the name, but I know who you're talking about. Dave Dunander, is that it? Uh, I'm pretty sure I'm subbed. I gotta check. Trouble Man. Definitely check out Trouble Man. That's a great opening. I haven't got the chance to watch, like, uh, sit down and watch all this one. I started watching it, like, uh, about a week ago. And then I had to go out. We had to go and do some stuff, like, uh, and so I never, so I want to sit down, uh, My channel doesn't grow quick. <laughs> no, actually, I kind of like the the spot that my channel's in. Kitty cat. No. So next up is assassination, and assassination is uh, again Bronson with Jill Ireland, of course, his wife. Oh, they have great sales at JB Hi-Fi, though. Uh, I think the same thing with HMB. HMB was kind of expensive at, at, uh, at the time, but they had, would have some great sales. And the thing is that they have such great selection. Uh, I watched an uh, Australian guy. I'm not sure if it's Dave Dunander. I really don't know. Uh, but there's an Australian guy, and he did like a, a video where he went to during like uh, Black Friday. He went to, uh, to, to JB Hi-Fi. It was really, really good. There's a unique one, and that is Harry in My Pocket. Just a fun little film with a... Uh, ever seen I... Me or... I'm, I'm sure Savannah's seen Not Quite Hollywood. I love Not Quite Hollywood. It's a fantastic movie, and it's a great documentary, and I've watched it several times. This has James Coburn, uh, Michael Sarazan, and the very gorgeous Trish Van, Van De Veer. So... Uh, They actually, if you pick up the Severin release, Lost Souls, I think that has some extra stuff on it with uh, with Richard Stanley, who of course was uh, featured in uh, in that movie. The uh, not quite Hollywood. <laughs> Damn bloody steelbooks. Anthony Quinn and Yogi Fett Kodo in Across 110th Street. Anything with James Coburn? It's a it's a fun film. This isn't one not, isn't one of the best covers of Kuna ever put out, but I just really like that. Here's a different one. Uh, remember when I started this out, and the first movie I showed you guys was uh, one of my favorite films, is which is uh, Fifty Two Pickup with Roy Schreider. So Fifty Two Pickup was the reason I picked up this film. That and this has an amazing looking cover, by the way, and it has, speaks to, like Hitchcock and stuff like that, and it is. Last Embrace. Look at that. Does that not look awesome? Does that cover not look amazingly awesome? Would you not immediately pick this up the second you saw this? Just like drinking the artwork of The Last Embrace. It's by Jonathan Demme, of course, the guy that directed Sons of the Lambs. Quinn can play any ethnicity. Quinn can play anyone. Quinn played God, remember? He played Zeus in Hercules, so... Yeah, you can, do, you, can do, you can do it all, man. Uh, I like this film. I'm almost finished. P, P. Mac, if you understand, you only got one more movie uh, to show. And, uh, but it's not great. There is something missing. I felt, I felt a bit off. I enjoyed it, but I felt it could have been more. And last but not least, it's going to signature at the end of the video, by the way, is Sicilian Clan. 
So Sicilian Clan is a great little French film. It has Alain Delon, Jean Gabin, and Lino Ventura, who are pretty much the who's who of these are really great uh, French actors. If you haven't seen them, they do the best French gangster films put out ever. And this one, what's really cool, what's super cool about this, is it has both cuts. And unlike in No Retreat, No Surrender, it, they each have their own disc. So you have the U.S. and the international cut of this one. The so Sicilian Clan, I did not know that. Uh, but they each, they each have their own disc. 2K restorations of the 125-minute international cut. Audio commentary with uh, film historians. Legend of the Clan. A uh, hour-long featurette. Yeah, it's two discs, dude. Uh, animated montage of images. The Sicilian Clan. Of, again, another short interview. But this is definitely worth checking out. If you've never seen this film, great edition. Not like both versions of the film. An hour-long documentary on it. And with that, guys, with my voice going, uh, which I can't afford to do because I do have to work tomorrow and use my voice a lot in my job. Thank you guys so much for watching and joining me here in the movie club tonight. I had a blast. This has been one of my uh, one of my favorite videos that I've done in a while. I do like Kino. They really excite me. So uh, let me guys let me know, you guys, if you get any of the Kinos, what you pick up. PMAX already told me it's stuff that he's picked up. Uh, let me know if you pick up any more PMAX. If, that's, if this inspires you to maybe take a second dip who knows uh, because I kind of want to get something I can't right now but I really do I'm kind of tempted uh, I wish they would extend it over the past August so that I can maybe get something from it but there we go Kino Lorber uh, yeah it was fun Leroy I'm glad you had fun because I had a blast with you guys so guys PMAC Movie Mac Leroy Green Carlos Rich Savannah uh, 4k uh, all you awesome, awesome people out there tonight, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for joining me here in the movie club. Have a fantastic uh, evening, and uh, until un until next club, until next class, wherever you want to put it. I guess I'm the I'm I, I'm the I'm the professor. I'm the pinheaded one. Culture Trini, it's great to see you actually come here, and uh, I'm going to do peace. I don't do it the other way because the English. And uh, again, a blast, guys. I'm rambling now. I'll talk to you guys next time, which is probably going to be Saturday for Stephen King Night here, uh, here in the movie club. It's time for tea.